asking, do we hold politicians to high enough standards? And what are the vehicles that the public have in order to get their voice heard? And ultimately, do we get the politicians we deserve? Well, joining me now to discuss this is Sir John Curtis, political professor at Strathclyde University. Thank you uh, for, for joining me, Professor. I mean, firstly, what, what, according to the polls or, or, or what research is out there so far, I mean, what, what is the public mood? And, and how do they feel right now about this scandal? Oh, the short answer to that is that many people are disgusted and quite a few are angry. Um, and as a result, the personal rep reputation of the Prime Minister has taken a quite substantial nosedive. Indeed, according to one pollster, he is currently as unpopular as both Jeremy Corbyn uh, and Theresa May. The, the problem here, um, this was became very clear with the argument about Dominic Cummings' uh, now notorious trip uh, to Barnard Castle, is that if you do indeed, rightly or wrongly, impose quite strict rules on people's social lives, and in particular, say to people, you can't attend the funerals of loved ones, you can't hold their hand when they die, you can't visit your mother or your father who is suffering from dementia in a care home. That's something that people remember, they connect with. It's something that they're probably going to take uh, with them to their grave. And the truth is that having now discovered that apparently within Town Downing Street, there were numerous breaches, not just of guidance, but actually of legal regulations that were put in place to try to protect public health. The truth is, you know, unsurprisingly, people are saying, look, hang on, how is it possible for this yeah. to be going on in the heart of government mm. when the rest of us were being expected to follow the rules? And some of us indeed were fined quite substantial sums for failing to do so. Uh, but, but, Professor, what we saw with, with the Shropshire by-election, you know, a, a leave voting seat voting for the Liberal Democrats, and now we have a consistent, uh, comfortable poll lead for, for Labour. It doesn't really seem like that there is a clear vehicle for the public right now, though, to express their discontent politically. Well, if you're asking me, um, you know, is, is the current uh, position uh, primarily to do with uh, disappointment and disaffection with the Conservatives or enthusiasm for Labour Party, you would undoubtedly say um, it is the former. Um, and it's, you're also right to say that uh, uh, while the Conservative Party uh, is a party that um, you know, was able to dominate the electorate in 2019, we are still looking at opposition, which is divided between Labour and to some degree the Democrats, and also, of course, north of the border uh, uh, by the SNP. Um, but that said, however, I mean, a one warning sign to the Conservative Party about the current polls mm. is the five polls that have been done since uh, last Wednesday's Prime Minister's questions, on average, put Labour on 41%. Now, this is the first time that the polls have begun consistently to put Labour above 40%. Now, still much for Labour to do. Um, people still tend to feel tepid about Keir, Keir Starmer or indifferent towards him. Um, Equally, many people yet still to be convinced the Labour Party are better able to run the economy than the Conservatives. But that said, I mean, I think I would suggest that probably Sir Keir Starmer has begun to become a rather more effective politician and rather less of a lawyer in recent weeks. And that also the yeah. reshuffle of his front bench has put in place so, a rather more but, effective... But, but I'm going to have to...